Today, some big early warning signs for President Trump's re-election hopes and some giant question marks about the Democrats and their 2020 field. Brand new Washington Post ABC News poll finds 56% of all Americans say they would definitely not vote for President Trump in 2020. Even among Republicans and Republican-leaning voters, nearly one in three said they'd like the GOP to nominate someone else. Again, it's still January 2019, but those numbers do suggest a 2020 opening for the Democrats. Which Democrat? Well, a majority of Democrats and Democratic-leaning voters aren't sure which candidate they want as the party's nominee. No candidate garners double-digit support. Former Vice President Joe Biden, who hasn't announced yet if he's going to run or not, leads the pack with 9%, hardly overwhelming. Followed by Senator Kamala Harris, she's at 8%. Senator Bernie Sanders, an interesting 4% of Democrats say they want President Trump. Former Congressman Beto O'Rourke, maybe still out there driving somewhere, is at 3%. 21 others get 2% or less. So the Democratic race, I uh, uh, wide open. Uh, wide open, which was what makes it so fascinating and interesting. It's early. Poll numbers can change. And President Trump, as candidate Trump and President Trump, has defied political gravity and political logic too many times to count before. However, however, if you're looking at 56% of the country says definitely not. Mm-hmm. One in three Republicans say, I'd like another choice. Uh, you have a problem. Doesn't mean you don't have time to fix it, but you got a problem. No question. And the biggest applause that I heard last night when I was in Des Moines at the uh, town hall we did, one of several with Democratic candidates, was uh, they want to pick a candidate who can beat Donald Trump. Who is that? No one has any idea, but it truly is the beginning of, of the shopping season. And people don't know these candidates. They're very well, you know, um, senators, a few governors out there. So people are, are, are picking them over. But as for the former Vice President Joe Biden, um, he just... Uh, said a few minutes ago to our uh, uh, Arlette Sines, who was flying with him from Florida, uh, he says, I don't think there's any hurry, but there's a bigger hurry to just decide personally. And he said his family is, quote, still thinking. Mm-hmm. So this is, again, a sense. I was asked by several Democrats in Iowa yesterday, is Joe Biden going to do this? Is he ambivalent about running? So there's not uh, a sense. We'll see how much time he has here. But uh, there's a hunger for maybe someone new. Uh, well, that's always the challenge. And if you're someone who's got an established brand, I don't want to call him someone old, someone who's been around, uh, you better get in and solidify before it goes away. Uh, you mentioned Senator Harris last night. She was in Iowa for CNN's first candidate town hall of the cycle. Um, very impressive performance if you watch it play out. The question is, on the substance, is she opening herself up to criticism, including here uh, when she's asked about Democrats want Medicare for all? How would that work? Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, to reiterate, you support uh, the Medicare for All bill, I think, initially co- co-sponsored by Senator Bernie Sanders. You're also a co-sponsor yes. on it. I believe it will totally eliminate private insurance. Um, so for people out there who like their insurance, well, they don't get to keep it. Well, listen, the idea is that everyone gets access to medical care. And you don't have to go through the process of going through an insurance company. Let's eliminate all of that. Let's move on. I can tell you Democrats on the Hill that I spoke to this morning were not jumping on board. This seemed to be, they they were focused more on fixing the ACA and making sure that people be able to keep their health care than throwing out the whole system. Uh, And I I think you're going to hear that from more, you know, you more establishment Democrats. But that, this also shows the left is rising in, in, in the Democratic Party, and that's who these candidates, Harris, uh, and I think you're going to hear some of the other candidates start to play to that base. And to, to that point, the aforementioned Howard Schultz, this is why it makes Democrats nervous to a degree. Uh, a lot of Democrats say, if you want to make this point, come to Iowa, come to New Hampshire, get involved in our primary. But listen here, he hears Kamala Harris say, private insurance, never mind, we're going to have Medicare for all. Howard Schultz says, wait a minute. He just played uh, Senator Harris in saying she wants to abolish the insurance industry. That's, that's not correct. That's not American. We're, what's next? What, what industry are we going to abolish next? The coffee industry? But to think we should get rid of the insurance industry? Again, this is exactly the situation. It's, it's far too extreme on both sides, and the silent majority of America does not have a voice. I, I don't know about the far too extreme part. That's the point he wants to make. He wants to position himself as centrist. But campaigns are supposed to be about ideas. Uh, so the Democrats or the Democrats going to litigate, let's just fix and improve Obamacare. We just won an election on it after losing some elections on it, right. 2010, 2014. We just won an election defending Obamacare. Let's fix it or let's disrupt the system again and go to this Medicare for all. Well, and look, before you even get to the question of would Howard Schultz take actual votes away from one side or the other, that is... Uh, 
that's manna from heaven if you're a Republican seeking to demonize the left and to radicalize, you know, and to sort of describe the Democratic Party as on the radical left, you know, you can, you can point to what Howard Schultz just said and, see, and say, see, we're the reasonable ones. We're the ones that don't want to eliminate uh, pri all private insurance in the country or not eliminate ICE and all of that kind of thing. And so his candidacy, however long it lasts, um, could be a real help rhetorically to Donald Trump and other Republicans. Uh, and so to the point, Michael Bloomberg, the former independent Republican mayor of New York, I think he was a Democrat at one point too, now says if he runs for president, he will run as a Democrat. Um, and a lot of people say to Howard Schultz, you know, your bill billionaire Bloomberg gets some criticism from some Democrats. He's more of a centrist guy. He talked to earlier today about pie in the sky ideas from some Democrats. Here he is just moments ago talking about his take on Howard Schultz running as an independent. Number one, you can't win as an independent because of the Electoral College requiring a majority. And number two, I think all it would do would be to um, uh, re-elect Donald Trump. And back in 2016, when I looked at it, I said, I did not want to be the one to give us Donald Trump. So I did not run as an independent, wasn't able to get into either parties uh, through their primaries. And um, you got Donald Trump anyways, but at least... 20, he publicly acknowledges looking at it in 2016. That's not the only time he's looked at it. Uh, <laughs> running, as an, running as an independent. But his, his point is, and he, this is a message, A, it it's, gets you points with Democrats, some of whom are skeptical, is Michael Bloomberg progressive enough? He says, look at me on guns, look at me at climate change. Yes, I am. Uh, but B, it's trying to tell Howard Schultz, go away. He is, and we'll, you know, we'll see how all this evolves. The a conversation I had with uh, Bill Burton, he seemed way farther ahead than uh, Howard Schultz has seen himself. He said, I'm going to look at this, whatever. But back to the health care for one position or for one second. I think uh, Senator Harris is trying to have a nuanced argument. Let's see how she answers that question the next time if she uh, adds a little more nuance to that. Because this is definitely... Uh, you know, a Bernie Sanders-like position. She has signed on to that bill. She also is a co-sponsor of other bills that allows more of a supplemental insurance and, program. And she, and she remembers the way, the way that Jake phrased the question, you know, about, you know, can you keep your health insurance? That's an echo of what got uh, President uh, Obama like your in doctor, trouble, so. You can keep your doctor. Right. That turned yes. out to be um, not...